Welcome to HQ Live. Hi, I'm Vicki Hoth from Handy Quilter, and joining me today is Jane Hopperich from Maryland. Yes. And we, I'm really excited because you've got a whole new technique here to just take your simple quilting to the next level. Right. So what do you call it? I call it the element of change. Okay, so you have a simple design, and then by changing it, just by sitting and doodling, I've come up with different designs to just ways to change a simple design and different things I can do with it. Okay. And, yeah. So what I see here is you've got a simple design such as a C. Yes. Or just a, a curve. And as we go along here, tell me what, how you've decided to change this. So I've taken a C. And then here, when I um, on this one, I've gone over with a C and kind of just added a little loop there. Instead of coming in and traveling back to get the other C, I'm just looping it around, coming over here and looping it around. So every other one gets a loop. Every other one gets a loop. That'd make a great border. Right. And it's a little bit easier than this because there's this one, there's a lot of travel. And this one, I just added a loop in the middle to kind of create something okay. different. So. So you made an E out of it, but actually, an e, yes, but an back e. to this, some people have a problem when they do this, that they don't get a good sharp point. So with this, you don't need to worry about the sharp point, and you just add a curl, or I mean a loop in that. Right. It makes it easier, I think. Yes. Okay, right. so you've added the E. Added the E in there. Or the extra loop there. Okay, the next one? The next one, I've just done my C. And then I've put a little swirl in there. And then I've gone into the next C and added in a little swirl. So then you have alternating swirls up and down your okay. border or mm -hmm. sashing. This one, I've just taken a C and I've echoed it. Then I've traveled over in, this, in the ditch and then done a C this way and then a C this way. So I've just changed up the directions. Kind of looks like a pumpkin. Yes, it does. So it could be Halloween. It could. <laughs> Good. Okay. This one I started with my, I did a little C. Okay. A larger C. And then I went and did the full C. And then on this one I did the same thing, I, but I just came down and met that, that mm -hmm. mark. And then I came back, back, and then went back like that. Okay. Okay. I get that. This next one I'm not sure I'm knowing where the path, so. Let's, how do you? This one here? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I did my C. So the next one, I started out and did a small C to here. I traveled in okay. there across those previously stitched places. And then I came back. And that brings you down it. so you can start your next C. And then I started the next C. And then again here, I came up and met that previous C, traveled in that previous stitched line, and then I went back. Okay, so if I pull these aside, you've got paper and pencil. Let's just start with that C and then go drawing. Now, the important thing is practice. Yes, absolutely. Doodling is the most important thing in quilting. Okay, so we're going to do that first and you get your paper and pencil out. Draw with us because you're going to draw and then you once you get that hand-eye coordinate, that memory, right. then it's easier to stitch. Yes, absolutely. Okay. How, ma how many hours are you going to draw before you start quilting? Uh, at least some time every day, yes. you know? Okay, so so just a regular C. Okay, so the regular C, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it this way. So I'm just going to, I kind of just travel a little bit to get that start, that running start to make, keep that, maintain that shape. And you want to connect. Uh-huh. Okay. Even though you're usually connecting in the ditch, but it kind of helps it flow better. Okay, so then if you take this again and add that loop to it. So you're just coming down here, you're adding the loop, coming up. Oh, that's easy. 
yeah. It flows really nicely. Oh, yes. And you could make them longer loops or shorter loops. Right. Okay, so then the one with the loop in the center that looks like an E, which you're making them backwards, but who right. cares? Right. Doesn't matter. So you could do them that way, or you could do them this way. Okay. Yep. All right, and then and with then our the loop. Mm -hmm. So for the swirl, I start and I do my C, and then I do a little swirl, and I come back and I do my C, and I do a little swirl. Now you can have the, the, all the swirls go in one direction, or you can have them go in opposite directions. It's totally up to you. Okay. I just find it's easier to follow the top of the C to get that swirl in. That'd make a really pretty border. It would. With those loops in it. Okay. And then our, my pumpkin. <laughs> Your pumpkin. The pumpkin's pretty easy. It is just really easy. Because you can just do a C, a C, kind of travel over and doing a C, and a C. And then you would travel over and doing a C, 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 C. And that's going to be in the ditch, so you're not going to see the any of that travel, no. Okay. All right. This one. Okay. So this one, you're going to start, uh, you're going to do a small one, come back, medium size one, come back. Okay, so what if, what if, what if I struggle with retracing over the top of it? Does it it's matter? It's okay. You can even see on there, I didn't always hit the mark. So if you struggle with that, then that would maybe be something that you would want to just always not hit the mark. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. So you're going to come back again your quilting element. Of it's a design choice. Yes. Okay, and now this one that you retrace. That okay. That little tracing. So this one, let's start it like this. So this one you're going to come up here, travel over a little bit, and come back and then go. Okay. And then So up, travel over, back. Okay, and that's over. when I would have to get my brain wrapped around because it's opposite each time. Right. But then Some, right. And sometimes I have to say that in my mind. You know, I have to have that little mantra of how things yeah. go. Okay, I think I'd like to see you stitch them. Alrighty. So let's let me move this aside because I know you have a lot more to show. Yes. But I think it would be really nice to start with that C and do a few and then move to the and do you need my paper so you know what you're doing? Uh, sure. What it's are you looking good for? The scissors? the scissors. Okay, sorry. Oh, we didn't get it threaded. It was threaded. <laughs> well, Hey, you did the thread. Oh, you you did really well threading on camera. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Twin has never threads. <laughs> so we're on the Amara. Yes. And we're gonna just have fun stitching. Absolutely. This is gonna be so absolutely. Fun. Okay. So the C. So you're just gonna start. You're going to travel down, get that running start to get that C shape in. Oh, that's easy. Yes, it is. And so then the next thing we're going to do is we'll just let you stitch all the way over there. Okay. And then the E. Yep. Okay. So the E would just be... All right, the next one was the one with the loop, except for I want you to start back over there because I want you to do a few of those. Okay. So you're just going to travel along there. I'm going there. to travel. Yep. 
Okay, the next one we're going to do are these loops, right? And I really like those, so I want you to do a few of those. Okay, here we go. We're going to do the C. We're going to come in and do a little loop or a swirl. We're going to do it this way. Whoops. That looks nice. It's just a little something different. It really is, but it make a nice border. Okay, our next one is the one with the little kind of, I, I kind of look at them as eyelashes there. Okay. But whatever you call them. All right. So I... I looked at that and I thought, of course, I know you did it different. Um, so you actually do the C first and then you do the eyelashes or the... For the next one, yeah. right? So the other thing with this one is you don't have to always come back down and hit that first one. Okay. So you can keep it out like that. Uh-huh. And that's a little bit more forgiving. Uh-huh. Because there's not the pressure of connecting to that other one. Yes, which which the last one that you showed looks like actually yes. like that, that it's, you know, stitched along the line. Right. So do you want to finish off? I'll move the... Do you want me to do this one? Yes. Okay. So this one, I just go to, he, to the previously and stitched then, line, travel over a little bit, and then come back, and then I finish off the C. Okay. So travel over, over, back, over. So I was just thinking as you were quilting that, this is about two inches, two and a half inches, but I thought oh, that would be really cute in a little tiny area as micro yes. quilting. You could that do that. That would look really nice. Yeah. So yes, you could. Anything, anything large you can quilt small. Uh, absolutely. And anything small you can quilt large. Yes. Okay. Well, let's move over to the next segment of your quilt little sample here. and. It's just this basic loop. What would you call that? What's I call that a wishbone. A wishbone. Yep, that's, that's my name exactly for it. That's <laughs> exactly what it looks like. Okay. That's right. So the first, I'm going to give you some more paper here. And you can just start drawing as far as the path so we understand how that goes. And I can see as we go up the row here, I see that wishbone in there, but you've sure added some different elements with it. Okay, so the wishbone is a slanted line, and you always, you're coming back on it and making that loop. So you're coming back, slant, come back and loop. So that's those two slants. So what, do you ever mark your quilt or use your, maybe your piecing in your quilt to, to get these spaced, or do you just do it and just let your creative juices do the spacing? I tend to just do it, but I know that there are quilters out there who like it to be precise. So they'll use a, like a stencil or some and type you of can. a grid yes. so that they line up perfect. Right. And if you mark everything, say every one inch or every half inch, then one of those can always hit on the half inch okay. or something okay. like that. So for those people that have to have it right. that way. All right. right, so so that's an easy one, and yes. then it's the same thing, but you've added more loops. I have. So you're going to go up, and you're going to do your first loop, but then you're going to swing it around and kind of do a like figure your, eight. a figure eight, or like you're tying your shoelaces. So you do okay. the first one, you loop it to the one side, to the other side, and then come up. So one side, other side, come back down, do the initial loop, and then add that little bow tie on there. 
So you really want to do that first initial loop because that gives you the base to put the other two, Correct. right? Okay. Yes. All right, and now this one. To me, this looks like you've done this twice. Absolutely. Oh, sometimes. Yes, because <laughs> yes, I'm thinking, I don't think she could do that just once. All right, so so you're, this is a double pass. Right, and it's done smaller here, but sometimes you have a bigger area, but you like that design or you're comfortable with that design. So if you do it like this, you do the initial whis wishbone, but that's not enough quilting in there for you. Okay. So you can come back and you can do a smaller a small one. Small wishbone. It's exactly the same. And it just adds a lot oh, more texture yeah. and Kinda it gives it more it interest. Makes it a little lacy look. Absolutely. Right. Oh, okay. All right. This has got three passes. Would I say that? Am I correct on that? Two. Oh, yes. Well, well, it's got loops. Uh, okay. Am I? Is it three? It could be three. Could be two. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to say that this is the sashing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do your wishbone. And then you're going to do just, I call it like just a, an arc in between each one. Okay. So you don't break your thread. You and just then travel out. down. And then. So okay. it's taking two simple design elements, and mm -hmm. you've made a different design out and of it. Filled, filled your area. Right. And the same. So the next one here is the same, totally the same. But yep. you're going to add the, a loop instead of right. just. Right. So you've come up here and done a loop instead okay. of a. Yeah. Instead of just a point. Okay. Easy. And then this one, you've got your wishbone, but this is a double pass as well. I yes. can see no loop. No loop. So it's similar to this, right. but there's no loop, just no a loop. straight line. Right. Okay. And then your last one, double pass. Yes. Same loop. Again, for probably a larger area. But then I've come back and done that, this, this one here. Oh, yes. I've come down and done it smaller. Okay. I like that. How you've taken just that one and and changed it up, even taken these two combined to make this, sizing difference. I think it's time to stitch. Okay. To watch this happen. All right. Do you want to just do that there? Okay. I'll take your your papers and we'll Okay. If you point at stuff where your hands are on that paper right there, I can't really see it. So, if you refer to stuff, just kind of bring it up to the okay. to the needle and then I'm actually going to probably bring the the fabric to the Or you can bring it uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah, snug it up against the needle and then Okay, so we're going to start with this regular wishbone. Okay. And then maybe all halfway through, you can start adding loops. Can you can you process that, or do we have to draw this? No. Nope. Because I might have to <laughs> stop and think. Okay, now we're going to no. All right. Oh, this has a tie off on it too. That's wonderful. All right. Okay, here we go. So there's the wishbone. That's really simple to do. Very easy. So let's add the other loops. Wow. I'm afraid that I'd probably take off and just do one and go to the next one. So that really, you do really have to think about that. You do. One, two, three, <laughs> one, two. That's probably what I'd have to do is count that out. All right, so then the next one is to do the loops and then add the smaller one with it. Right. Right? So right. do the loops and then add the smaller one. Yes. So that's two passes. Yes. Now, let me ask you this. When you do your two passes, do you break your thread and go back and start at the beginning, or do you come stay to the right side and move back? It depends on how big of an area I'm going into, but most often I break my thread and I come back come and back. start. Okay. 
All right, I'll let you do whatever you do best. Okay. Just the regular wishbone, and you're so good at getting those spaced right. That takes practice. It does. Okay, so then I would do my tie off. Because more often than not, you're working on a longer a long, border. Mm -hmm. You so, want to start back yeah. at the other side. Okay. And then you're going to come back. And just reduce the thinking about very same one, right? Correct. We're not but adding any other loops to no it. No other loops. It makes a great border. It really does. Yes, just airy, but it does the trick. It, it just does. fills it in. It fills it in. Okay, so our next one that we're going to talk about is the one that adds, almost makes it look like a heart by adding those little loops. Okay. Right? And this is when you say that you really don't break your thread. No. You just, even if it's a long full size? Or? Uh, yeah, sometimes then I do. Okay. All right, I'm ready to see the next one. Do you want me to start up here? Uh, sure. Okay. I'll move my... Okay. Okay. So first pass, we're going to do the wishbone. And then I would come back and just do... Just a half uh, smile. Just a, just half a smile. Right. right. Then I would travel up in the ditch, or maybe travel to there if it's in the... Okay. To try and place it correctly. All right. And there you have it. Okay, so um, let's try this last one here, because I know a lot of these, that wishbone... Well, actually, let's move on. Okay. Because I think we've got this one. Alrighty. I really do. I don't be so I'm gonna give you your paper back. We'll come back over okay. here and get you a new palette again. There you go. However way you want to place that. Okay. There's your marker. This is um ribbon candy. Yes. I know it's been is that kind of the name for it? I don't know if there's other names. Uh, I that's what I call it, ribbon candy. Okay. So you can see as we look up here, from here all the way up, I would not recognize that as that, but I get it. Right. I see. So there's a lot of different little elements you've added to it, and so go. Okay. Let's, all right. I like ribbon candy. I do too. So you just start and you do your ribbon candy. What I found is I feel like some people have a hard time getting this design which is why I started doing the next one up because it teaches people oh. to kind of come back around and grab that first one. Oh. And if they have to grab the one before it, they kind of get that motion down. Okay, because mine sometimes I find kind of wants to lean. Right. So that kind of helps you with that. I really like that one. I think almost better than that one. I use that a lot. That it is adds nice. more texture to the quilt. Okay, so then this one... Okay. These are more hearts. But yes, so you're just having the same principle, but you're doing a little loop, loop or an E in there. And then on these, you did overlap them. Yep, you very could easily could. Either way. Hmm. Good border. Yes. A uh, really good border. Okay, now this one. you got to get those circles circle round. Can mm -hmm. you do that? I can try. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to come around and just swing back around, go up, swing around, do the circle, come down, do the circle. Simple, but 
a total different look. It is. And, and then you want, yeah. while you're doing it, we might as well move up to this next right. one because that one has, you've, had, you've got three circles So in I there. can do one circle, two circle, and I could even do three. I can do however big that area is. You can just leave it at two. Okay. Oh. Wow, by the time you get done, practicing all of these you should have that pretty you should have it down good. okay then this next one you've actually put a hook in it or a curl a little, a little swirl yep so this one you can it's so I tend to go come up to about here I do the swirl I come back and then I go back around okay swirl come a little back bit of retracing a little bit yeah you better practice this one on paper and pencil <laughs> I think that I absolutely. But once you get it down, the finished product is really nice. It is. So I was just thinking about this one. That would be a fun one to hit and miss on the curls. Yes. That just would be good. Be a random one that just gives it a different look, yes. a different feel. It does. All right, your last one, you squared that bottom I off did. for the top. Whatever. I did. I call it a keyhole. I don't know, like an old time keyhole. Uh -huh. So if you come down to about here and then you square that off, and so you're basically. Okay, you got a lot of edges there. Yep, you're just doing. Okay. So really it's like a forward S and a backward S as you're doing this. Okay, add a circle to it. Well, I'd add that. Oh, you're looping them over. Oh, good. Good plan. Oh, oh, that was a real, that's just a good motion. You just continue that along. Mm-hmm. That looks good. You want to just come down there? Can you work back? Sure. All right. I can try. That just is such a good flow, the way that, the way you're doing that. It's really it easy to it do. It flows very well, and you can add the little swirl in there. You just have to come back a little bit. Wow, how easy is that? Very easy. All right, let's square it off to the end there. And then I know we have another sample to look at. Yes, we do. Okay, Jane, we have another sampler here that you've done some really fun things in. This is a real basic shape that we call continuous curve. Right. But I see where you have really taken it to the next level. So tell me how you've, what you've done here. And then we're going to, rather than draw this time, let's just go straight to quilting. Okay. All Sounds right. good. So we've just taken the basic uh, continuous curve, or some people call it orange peel. Mm -hmm. um, then we've doubled it here. We still come back into the same corner. So you're not breaking your thread at all. You're just nope. continuing around. Right. Okay. And this shows if you have a larger square and you feel the need to fill in okay. every little area, you could run a little straight line in there, curvy straight line. Okay. And this one I did, um, I did a little one first, and then I came back and I did the full uh, continuous curve. So a little one. Okay. And that. And same thing with this one, except for I did two, kind of like eyelashes, like mm -hmm. you were talking about earlier. And so that, and it really does, when you look at it in a grid, it really adds oh, a lot of oh interest yes. to it. Okay, so so this is, you're not using rulers, you did free no, motion. No, all free so motion. You just, you just go out from the center and come into the center. Yes. And go out, because it's not real perfect, but it's, when you add all of this, it's wonderful. Right. 
Okay, so so are you going to stitch that right now, or do we want to keep talking? Why don't we just stitch? Okay, we can stitch Take you those. all the way to there. Mm -hmm. And we can even do those two okay. real quick. Yeah, you can see the the path so that you'll know how to to work make this work for you. And if this were a block, like we've got a block here, would you do all of that? I tend to like to go down the one side with the continuous curve, then over across the other side, and then as I come up this third side, I serpentine across and I serpentine back. Okay. And then I come up and I do the next one. And then when I come up here, I go over to the fourth side and I serpentine down, getting that continuous curve on both sides. And then I go over here and I do the same thing. And then I'm finishing up right there. Okay, you're finishing. Then if you t decide to do something like this, it's the very same path, just making that, just the very same right. path on this, but making that echo around. Yes. Right, and you could also do that a little, you could sometimes, just if you decide that you have a better quilt path for that, then you can, you can do that. Because that, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. I have to think about that one, huh? Right. All I'm right, do you need some scissors? scissors? I do. I'm going to do the first one, and then I'm going to cut that. So I'm just going to do my continuous curve. And there it's all done. Okay. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to come down here, I'm going to do one. And then I'm just going to go a little bit above it, but still down in that. And now I've done two. Fills more of the space. Okay, the right. third one, you're going to add that little ripple. Right. And after that you've done it all. fits more like for in a bigger square mm -hmm. where you have a lot of space, because in these squares, you're not going to have a ton of space to do that. Let's so say you're going to do the one, and come back in and do a second one. And then at this point, I might just kind of run this. Okay. Okay, so now, Let's add this little the little eyelash. eyelash. That's a fun one. It's a very forgiving. If you don't hit that mark, it's okay. You don't have to always be on the same line, and you don't have to come back down and touch that the edge of the square either. I like that. Or you can even do two. Okay, so what I see is this here, where you've got this double, that because once it's all done in a big yes. block like that, then you get this effect, which is really cool. It's kind of yes. like a rope kind of twisting, braided right. rope type. I and like I love that. it. It kind of adds some unique texture. I get a little bored sometimes doing the whole the same thing on all the quilts, so that to change really things up, it helps. Yes, it really does. Okay, so now I can see um, we've got a little bit of a twist here. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a star look, and then you've done the very same thing. Yes, but doubled it. The same thing. Yes. And then? That's a double with a double. Okay. A double eyelash and a double twist. Okay, so stitch that. Okay, Just that's one of my favorite because you know what stitch? I you know what I f have found about this one is that you don't have to be perfect on these no. sometimes you feel like you have to have the right spacing yes you know but this one you don't and you get such a fun effect yes so. and it's really fun if you do it in a grid that oh, okay. in a grid it really adds a lot of interest okay, to that going to look for a grid, no I didn't, didn't do okay. that in that one okay I'm just so gonna it. stitch right on over all right okay here we go. So I start with the orange peel and slide into the corner. 
So when I've done this, I think mountain, valley. slide into the valley. <laughs> yep. Mountain, valley. Yes. And if yes. I always do the mountain first, it never gets messed up. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And then if you do it twice, so you do the first one, and then you do the second one. Again, always going back into that same corner. Uh-huh. I like that set, the double, you know, the little echoing around it. Right. Okay, so then let's pull up our, our fabric here and see what did we add to it. The little eyelashes. Yes. Okay. The little eyelash. Sorry, That's got okay. me way there. No, you're good. Holding so that we, up. An eyelash, an eyelash, 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 mountain, slide. I have so got to try that on a quilt. I really like Isn't the that. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I know, and it's so forgiving. It is yep. easy, easy. And if you, you get that to, done fast. to jazz it up, you could just again add, add that second one in there if you wanted to. A little echo. Yes. Oh, great. Okay. All right. So now we'll move back over here to this square because I see we have some more. Some more. The instead of just doing the same curve, you've added another element to it. Right, right. So I get, this one is more like an E, this one is more like a circle, Okay. and then this one is just a, a small little. orange peel to the middle, and sometimes you might want to pre-mark that if you need everything to be, you know, exactly uh -huh. in the middle, and just a little, like, flower bud up and then back, and then okay. over. Okay. So those are pretty easy to do. All right. Um, actually, I think I'm going to move you back over here instead of do those because we've got more to see here. This, I really like the look of this, especially in small backfills right. and on an angle. So it's on the diagonal. Mm -hmm. But to how, what's the path of this so to, to here for right now? Okay. So I like to show that this is, you know, you can do just across and a, a, a line from mm -hmm. corner to corner, and it will be fine. Mm -hmm. But if you add an orange peel around, then that's really nice. Or for this one, the only thing I did, I did the orange peel, and then I went around a second time. Okay. And then this last one, you just added that loop around. So that's right. If you Another had, time around. Right. If it's if a you, bigger block. If you had a bigger block and you needed to fill in that space, then you could add, easily add something in there. And it doesn't so, have to be what I added. It could be anything you can think so of. So this one right here, I'm going to bring this over. And this is one that I've really, I've seen this a lot, and it's been quite small. Right. But this one I, I've really enjoyed because I like that little line going through it. Because normally this is what we've seen. Right. I like it because it adds a little bit more texture. Yes, it does. It really does. And I'm all about texture. Okay. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, so the last thing that I would really like to have you show us today is, uh, this is really popular right now, pebbles, pebbles, you know, circles. But what you've done to just the plain pebble is you've added that extra element to it to give it a whole different look. And depending on the quilt right, is where you would, you know, put that. Okay. Some quilts would never, you'd never want to do no. that with, but there could be a quilt that you'd just go, that is perfect. Right. Yeah. So talk through this. This I love putting a little curl right. and just l let's do some. This looks like a marble. Yes. Kind of like a cat eye marble, you know. It's So there's the regular circles, then there's a circle within a circle, or a pebble. Mm -hmm. Like you said, there's the swirl that stays on its previous stitch path, mm -hmm. or you can open it up and get that open swirl within the pebble. This one, you basically are just going to go around, complete the circle, and then kind of S-curve out of it and on to the next one. Okay. So sometimes it can help with traveling around, because you don't have to travel around to get to your next area to pebble. This one I just added some little squares in there for fun. This one I just did um, a kind of a, a, a pebble and I just branched out from that trying to maintain that bottom area mm -hmm. right down there. Got a base of it. Right. 
And this one, I call them island pebbles because I'm just creating an island where the pebble sits. Oh, okay. and you leave it big enough so that it actually gives you a good negative space. Right, right. So I'm doing the one pebble and then I'm stitching out and out and out and out and then I'm branching off to the next and, one. And I see that it doesn't matter that you overlap into one no. of the others as long I've as you stay, leave that open. Right. And that tends to work in some more modern type quilts. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. And I think this one would too. Yes. That would be for a right. fun. Okay. So how about we just start letting you quilt and we'll let you talk about what you're doing here and um, show how to actually get accomplished some of this so okay. they can see that path. Let me do them in each of these so squares. So get your paper and pencil. Start drawing with her as she quilts. Yeah. Go ahead in the mini squares. I think that works great. Oh, we got to clip, clip some threads. Drawing. So the basic pebble, and some people struggle with that basic pebble, so we'll just talk about how you do that okay. to get started. So a lot of times when I'm teaching people how to do pebbles, I you do a circle, but then you travel around. You always want to keep on going in a forward motion and going in a figure eight. And that, I'll demo that when on this, as I'm stitching this out. I'd also increase the stitch count if you're doing really small pebbles because uh, you're going to be working in a smaller area and you don't want it to end up looking like squares. So you're going to be in stitch regulation? Yes. So do you ever do manual mode? I do. I do like to so do manual I mode a lot. I think it would be kind of good to show both. Okay. And so do go ahead in your stitch regulation. Do you have, are you going to do cruise on or precision? Uh, cruise. Okay, so you've got it at 15 stitches per inch. And when you put your cruise on, you'll do what? Well, you, right now it's up to 225. We'll see if we need to slow it down let's, or speed it up. Right, let's see how it works. And this is in stitch regulation. So you see how I'm always moving forward. And even if I have to travel around the pebble to get to the next area, that's what I'm doing. And if you don't think really hard about it, you tend, your mind tends to help you remember where that previous stitch line was. So do you want to stop for a minute? Yep. So I just want to sh look at something. I see that you have space right here. And that's okay, isn't it? That is it? okay. Pebbles they, you don't, don't. They don't have to be no. right against each other. It's no, okay. It is okay. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay. I was I just want to point that out that it's okay to have a little blank space. And do you always want to keep your your pebbles circular or do you sometimes elongate them? You could elongate them. You could make a couple big and a couple small and then you end up with like cobblestones, okay? All right. So, why don't we turn it now into manual mode and you've got it at uh, that might be a little fast. You've got it at 825. I don't know. Let's just see. Okay, so now it's just the manual mode. That's the stitches right. per minute. No surging of the stitch regulator. You're regulating your own stitches by just your movement. That Does that feel nice and smooth? It does. I tend to, if I'm doing a lot of these, I do go into manual mode. All right, are we going to add a curl to it? Okay. And would you do them all with curls or just do periodic? You don't have them? to. Even when I'm doing a circle within a circle, I do it usually periodically. Okay. And I usually start out I usually start out with the big circle and then I add a little circle. Okay. But if you do the small one and you build off of it, you can do that too. Oh, I love that way that looks. And then you could add just some regular some regular pedals to fill spaces if you need to. Yes, you could. Okay. All right, let's do that marble look that I or what, what do you call that? Which one were you talking about? This, this one? This one. So that's, so I, yeah, I like that. Let's let the viewer see that. So this is the one with that little swirl through it or that okay. S shape through it. So there's your pebble and then you just S out of it.
And you don't have to do it in every one. Yeah. That's a fun one, though. That is fun. All right. Now we'll let's do our last one okay. here. And we'll do that. What do you call that? The modern one? I said island pebbles. Island I don't pebbles. know why. Okay. And we'll finish up with island pebbles and let you watch this. Oh, just keep going around. Doesn't matter how many times you go around? Nope. It certainly doesn't. Just till I'm comfortable with it and I feel like it's done its job. And I kind of branch out to do the next one. Just till I feel like that thread's mashed, uh, kind of mash uh -huh. the fabric down so I'm going to get that effect that I'm looking for. Wow, that's great. Thanks. Jane, this is this is amazing to take a basic shape or a basic element of a design and add all those different elements to it to totally change it out and take it to the next level. That's a lot of fun and anybody can do it. They just have to doodle. Right. And give it a right. try. Get your paper and pencil and start doodling. Now I found a lot of times rather than a you know because I think oh, I'll just use a dry erase board and marker but I found that if I have a notepad and I can see my progression yes and if I see something I really like I don't want to have to erase it it's there for me circle it yes that this is something I really want to try on the quilting machine yes so, I like that idea yeah well thank you for joining us thank today. you and join us next month for another HQ live see you stitching